Hi everyone, it's Maggie here. I thought I'd see how we go with our recording today with me just actually speaking as we go. Don't know if it'll be successful and if it's not you'll never know because I'll dub over it. So let's see how we go. Today I'm actually pouring on a piece of craft wood that's been cut as a pallet. I've covered the hole here so that the paint doesn't just all pour down and go into the hole and then we just lose a whole lot of uh, cell effects in that way. I've primed it as you can see it's with a waterproof primer to help the paint sit on top rather than be absorbed into the wood. Um, this is a prepaid piece so it's not for sale it's been ordered um, for a child's room and the particular thing that we're looking at today as the experimental component is the notion of adding a glitter paint. Now what we do know is that anytime we add glitter into paint it covers the paint uh, sorry it covers the glitter and therefore the glitter is painted over and we don't see anything what my concept or idea for today is to see how we go just adding the glitter and mixing pouring medium directly into that and then adding it as part of the layering in the in the actual pour flip cup so i reckon that might do um, i won't add any silicon or anything into this because it's got directly the pouring medium it's my favorite pouring medium um, global colors whoops and we'll see how that goes for texture or consistency rather we don't want it to be any thicker than the other paints that are pre-made and I just see if that's still sparkling and yes it is so hopefully this will just add some texture and dimension into the overall pour. A little bit thinner I reckon. I actually think we might add a bit of water. How's that looking? I reckon that will do it for what we're looking for. So we'll just put away our pouring medium because it's quite a warm day today here in Belan, Victoria. And let's get on with our pour. I've chosen a very, very big cup because I just want to use one cup for this um, flip cup. I'm going to probably get the paint up to about here. Um, to make sure that I've got enough and I always like to start with a spray of WD-40 straight into my cup and that's simply because it helps the paint all come away from the sides and probably adds to a little bit of the cells. Um, this is pre-made white. I won't be using too much white, just enough to help create the different splits in the colors as well as the merging colors um, and I might add some of this glitter component straight up because worst case scenario it will blend into the white and give it a sparkle there um, I've chosen primary colors because it is for a child's room and we all know that the primary colours look fabulous and you can't go wrong with a pour, you won't get any muddying. So I'm going to put yellow in first and then I'm going to really think about what colours I want in this. Do I want orange next or green? And that will, that will be inevitable considering I'm going to add red or blue next. So I think because it's a girl's room, might go for the red next knowing that the red and the yellow will create shades of orange and 
You can see some nice cell formation already in the cup. Um, I might do a bit of silver next. I do like always having some metallics in my artworks. And maybe a little bit more white now. White sinking, so I don't think I'll add much more. And some more of the glitter paint with the pouring medium mixed into it. And I think some blue now. Ooh, that was a big dollop. Mm, making sure that I just sort of swirl those around now. Not really wanting too much white to be mixed in with it. I might do a bit more red. And a dash of pink to get those primary colours looking quite feminine. And that looks like quite a lot of paint for this particular pour nonetheless. I'll use the rest or what spills over into well for something that's for sure. You could use the last bit of that glitter mix because I really want to see how it goes. And well I feel like I want to do a flip cup but maybe I should just pour on circularly and see how it goes. Uh, no, I'll do a flip cup. Here we go. Whoa, the big cup of paint. Get my bearings. Now, what I'm going to do now is just spray the board with a little bit of water just to help the paint move across it. No, not very much, just enough to make it damp. We can already see some of those colours coming out of the sides here. Nice and interesting. There is quite a bit of white on the top, so I wouldn't be surprised if I end up having to do some swiping to reveal colours underneath. We'll do this pressure push. See how that goes. We might tip this this way and I can really see some of those sparkles coming up through that which indicates to me that we've been successful in making sure that those sparkles will come through. All right. Now I think I'll probably end up having to spatula some of the area over here unless I, oh no I'm just going to do that. Look at some of those huge cells, God. <sighs> It's going to be such a shame to see them moving now, isn't it? Maybe we'll just do a bit of a tilt before we use the rest of the paint. Quite gorgeous. Alright, I'm going to pull the cup up this direction, which sadly is going to disturb those cells. But knowing that it's doing good cell formation, we try not to worry too much. Oh. Look at that now, those beautiful creeks of colours. I'm going to drag this over here and then drop some here. And that will do. I'm going to tip this up straight away. And bring some of this paint over to the other side. Let that come down. Okay, the board is completely covered now. Awesome. Well, wow, that was sensational. And the cells are coming through just beautifully, as well as some of that glitter glue. You can already see that, and so when that dries, um, he's hoping that it holds really well. Okay, let me just wipe my hands up. Oh, of all the things I didn't have right near me, wiping stuff. Okay, it's over there.
All right, sorry about the jolting. I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. Oh, got it. And let's come in and take a look at some of these like sensational cells. You can really see how the uh, paints have worked really well. And it, using primary colours, you're always, always going to have a successful pour. You have got no chance whatsoever of any muddying. Let's get over here to see some of that work. Can you see the sparkles coming through there? I hope so, because I can, and I think the camera is fortunately picking them up. Sparkles are a really hard thing to get on camera. It's um, a beautiful, beautiful pour. Wow. I might just slow it down a little bit because I will be putting this up for everyone to see. Of course, now we just have to hope that this dries like it does. And um, in a day or two, I will post the outcome once we've got the total dry effect and we can see how the opal glitter product worked. Meanwhile, I'm gonna turn off and see what I can do with some of this fabulous paint that's come out the edges there. Oh, sometimes I just feel like I wanna roll in it. God, gorgeous. All right, everyone, happy pouring. And if you're interested in um, joining any of us Australian pouring enthusiasts, you can find us in a group called Ready Steady Pour. And we'd love to have you on board. We love discussing all things pouring. And in particular, we like talking about products that we can find in Australia and uh, the equivalent to American products that are local for us, as well as keeping each other informed and in the loop of sales uh, in art supply shops so that we can keep getting our products at a reasonable price and regularly. Have a great day, everyone.